Hello and welcome to today's Business Skills webcast, The Mastery of Wellness. My name is Sarah Gonzalez, I'm from Redback Conferencing and I will be your host for today. So today we are talking about the mastery of wellness and how it can impact every single aspect of your life. Today I would like to welcome you to this event and also our host, Michelle Powell. How are you today? Good, thanks, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Great. Great to be here. We've got so many people registered for this event and we're excited because, like I said, this is something that touches every single one of us, whether we think about it or not, and it's also something that delves into your personal life, your family life, your work life. It sort of covers everything, doesn't it? Every aspect of your life is impacted by your health. Yes. Essentially, I think your ultimate wealth is your health. Okay, well, that's a good start. So <laughs> can you tell us a little bit more about wellness, what you do, what it all means before we get into these 10 steps that I'm really excited to hear about? Sure. Well, um, as you know, my name is Michelle Powell and my business is called Vitality Reconnected because we do have that vitality mm. in there. We just need to reconnect with it because society pressures, work pressures, mm. family pressures kind of disconnect us from it. And I think we need to you know, gain that mm. back. It's in there. We just need to find Get it, it out. again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so I'm a holistic health practitioner and an inner wellness specialist. So in everyday language, what that actually means is I do physical, mental, emotional, nutritional and spiritual. Mm -hmm. So think of it like a counsellor, a naturopath, a personal trainer, a physio and all of those sorts of people put in the, the one. Like a unicorn. <laughs> well, I can be pretty yeah. magical. <laughs> so these 10 steps that we've spoken about um, within the registration process, yeah. can we just get started on those? Um, because you've actually called it a 10-step checklist to uncovering the key to check in with yourself. So is this something that we do on a regular basis? Is it something we do once and then move on from? What is this all about and how can we use it? That's great. So I think that it's really important for us to have the ability to check in with ourselves because mm. we tend to rely on everybody else to tell us how well we're doing in every aspect. Yep. So if we learn our own signs of our own body, we can check in. And I've spent the past 13 and a half years in the health industry and that's what brought me to create the mastery of wellness because I just found so many people are confused and conflicted mm -hmm. because there's so much information out there. Yes. Where do you start? What's right? What's wrong? Yes. Where do you go? So I broke it down into 10 areas that you can address with yourself and then from there you can figure out do you need additional help and support? Do you need a coach? Do you need a trainer? Do you need a naturopath? Mm -hmm. What do you need? So it gives you the ability to analyse yourself and then go forward from there. Okay, let's get started on number one. Alrighty, so basically the 10 steps are broken down. Some I'm sure most people will be really aware of mm -hmm. and others it might be, oh, I've never thought of adding that into there. So some might make perfect sense, movement, nutrition, hydration, breathing patterns. Thoughts and emotions tie in because yeah. generally our thoughts lead to our emotive state, so how we're feeling. Um, sleep cycles, the relationships that we have in our life, the stresses that impact us mm. in many ways. Work and finances I've tied in together because generally our work environment leads to our financial capacity. Yeah. And then my favourite one is being true to yourself. So let's have a little bit of a look yeah, at each one. Let's kick into movement. So is this physical, getting out there, going to the gym, relieving stress in that sort of way? Yes and no. Okay. So this is one area that most people think they have a lot of information on and think they're quite knowledgeable mm. on, but they generally are very confused. So movement actually has two aspects of it. Okay. There's working out, which we all tend to know really well, going yeah, to the gym, yeah. lifting weights, going for a run. But when I say to people, what are you doing to work in? Most people look at me pretty what blankly like, <laughs> what, what is that? So we actually have two energy systems okay. in our body. One is catabolic, that's energy out, tissue destructive. Mm -hmm. And there's the anabolic system, which is our rest, repair, energy in. Okay. So if we've tipped the scales always on one element, we're going to be out of sync, which throws our hormones out of balance, throws our moods out of balance, throws our mental capacity mm. out of balance. So learning how to balance our working out and working in capacities is really important for movement. 
And on the movement topic, I think it's really important that people note you don't have to beat your body into submission. Mm. There tends to be you've got to punish yourself and you've got to smash yourself in order to achieve something. But if you're already stressed yes. and you add more stress onto the system, that only creates a recipe for more problems, not mm. less. So. Okay. Movement's one that we generally have to be a bit careful of and do our research really, really strongly because nowadays people get pushed into things which are generally wrong for their individual yes. body type. Okay. Yeah. Now, if we move on to the next one, um, I think this one's quite self-explanatory for a lot of people, judging by the picture, but um, <laughs> what does this actually mean? We think of nutrition as just eating, you know, our green vegetables, yep. something that's going to do, <laughs> something that, you know, comes from the ground. Is that what it's all about? Because there's so many diets and fads. Oh, and <laughs> isn't there just? I can like, imagine what you hear. <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous. Like, there's so many weird things out there, like the fruitarians and all sorts of stuff that's so restrictive mm -hmm. with our diets nowadays and the thing is the old saying goes one man's food is another man's poison and I think that's really important mm. because what would work for your body might not be right for mine yes so there's no such thing as an actual diet but it's individualized for every person and I think that's where people tend to go wrong they follow a diet that's planned out but it doesn't actually take mm. in how they utilize food themselves. So if we look at it from a scientific level, every body, just like we're different yes. on the outside, so too are our organs, the size, shape, colour, even location mm. of our organs is as unique as our thumbprint. So when it comes to diet, it's not just researching or oh, well, what's the latest thing mm. to do, but it's looking at what does my individual body need? And there's lots and lots of ways that you can do that. But I think for everybody watching today, it's really important to look at the quality yes. of our food because with today, we just, we're just we eating food-like substances, not actually food. So we do need to get back to basics and start eating real food again. Mm. Okay, yeah. because, you know, the whole, you know, you are what you eat thing really comes into your whole overall wellness, doesn't Absolutely. it? And it can impact with probably every one of these steps, I'm thinking. Absolutely, yeah. and, and that's the thing, that saying you are what you eat, that's actually true mm. because when we eat food, we don't just in one end out the yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. We actually assimilate that, so we're creating cells from it. In fact, every second we replace two million cells in our body. Wow, we're that's pretty a efficient. Fun fact. <laughs> we're pretty efficient. Yeah, so, who would have thought? But we're replacing it with our food. Yeah. So when you're thinking about what you're eating, what do you want to be building mm. your your body from? And it, it comes from our food. Mm, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> two million. <laughs> Um, now, number three to overall wellness. Um, this looks lovely, this picture. It's very I know, <laughs> it is. It gives you that peace and quiet, yes. but it's actually hydration. And this is one that tends to get neglected a little bit. Mm. It's like, oh, yeah, I know, I know I should drink water, but we're not doing it. Yes. And the thing is, every function in our body requires water. Even our lungs mm. require water in order to breathe correctly. So every function in our body needs hydration. And the average person, I think the latest statistic I saw last week was 90 point something percent of the Australian population are actually dehydrated. Wow. That's a huge amount of people that need to have more water in the system. Mm. Um, and there's a simple mathematical equation you can use to figure out exactly how much water you need to have. So you might want to jot this one down. Okay, I'm ready. 0.033. <laughs> times your body weight in kilos is how many litres of water you need per day just while you're sitting here doing nothing. Wow. So imagine if you are active exactly. and doing stuff. Exactly. Just, it's funny that you say that because the other day I just got home from work, went on a walk, came back, and I had this headache. And I don't drink as much water as I should. I know that. But <laughs> this day I was just doing stuff and I wasn't really paying attention to my water intake. And after two cups of water, the headache just disappeared automatically. It's like your body yep. sends off signals, doesn't yes, it? Yes, yes. There's so many signals that the body literally cries out for mm. water, but we don't always register them because we're we're so busy yes. or we can mistake it as hunger instead of thirst. I have heard that. If yeah. sometimes you're hungry, have a sip of water and see what it does yes. to you. Yeah. So what impact can dehydration have on your overall wellness? 
Essentially, if you're dehydrated, number one, your mental capacity goes mm. down. So your ability to be able to think, to concentrate, to work, yep. um, to even problem solve, it mm. sort of it landslides down really dramatically. And your body goes through almost like a system of delegation. Mm. So it looks at it going, okay, so can we take some water from your hormones? Can we take some water from okay. here? Can we take water from all over the place? So it kind of shunts it to where it's really needed mm. as opposed to we well, don't want it to pick and choose where it goes in your body you want it to be everywhere yes. because at any given moment we're at least 75 percent water so we need to have lots of that to keep replenishing exactly we? yeah yep Very and the average person just in everyday function loses about eight liters of water a day that's why we need to replace mm. our body weight in ounces of water a day to top up what we lose. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay, moving on to number four. Yes, breathing patterns. Now, this is another one that over the years, number one, I was guilty when I was first in the health mm. industry of not addressing this with clients because I didn't understand myself the massive impact mm. that breathing is. But essentially, if you think of it like um, a totem pole, yep. breath is like the very top of the survival totem pole because every function underneath that runs off your breath being optimal. Yep. So the average person, depending on their height and size, is should be breathing between 8 and 12 times a minute if, when you're using your lungs and diaphragm in the mm. correct order and to the correct capacity. But the latest statistics for Australians is 22 to 30 times a minute. So, number one, your body thinks you're stressed. Yes. And number two, you're not utilising everything correctly. And, and when your breathing is out, your metabolism's out, your brain capacity is out, your one hormones never are out. That. Yeah, it's one of those things that... You don't that, concentrate on your breathing, do you? No, that's it. And, and we kind of take it for granted because we just do it. Mm. Um, but yet we know if we stop breathing, within a few minutes we die. So mm. we know how important it is, but it's one of those ones, a bit like water, where we just go, oh, yeah, I know but we don't realise the ripple effect that can have mm. on our health. And so how do you keep track of that? Because I don't, I can't sit there and count my breaths per minute. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so is there, are there tools that we can use? How do we... I generally recommend having a breathing assessment. Okay. So someone, you know, like myself or someone who's a Czech practitioner mm. or that's trained in those areas um, of health because... Um, I mean, I've had people that have come to me from all sorts of specialists who are like, what? I've never had my Your breathing, breathing checked. checked. Yeah. So it's it's one of those ones where it does need to be addressed. And, I mean, we can do a simple test right now if you like. Okay. So place one hand on your stomach yep. and one hand on your chest mm -hmm. and take a really big, deep breath in. Now... Did your stomach rise first and then your chest? Oh, I didn't think of that. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know these things before I can. <laughs> and some people notice that just their chest rises or they go together or it's all kind of like, I don't know what happened here. Mm. So that's your first self-check-in. Okay. Most people are chest breathers, so okay. it's the first point of check-in. So if your chest rose before your diaphragm, so your mm. stomach rose, so if you watch little kids running around, they're always breathing with their bellies, and that's how we're supposed to breathe. So, so when it, does that change? I think it's through modern stresses. Yeah. Oh, my God, we're late, hurry up. <laughs> so yeah, much to do yeah, yeah. so we're in that go 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 yeah, yeah. fight or flight all the time yep. so it, it becomes the pattern it becomes the habit and mm. we can create these faulty breathing pathways essentially and we have to go back and sort of reset the system mm. yeah okay. Interesting. Yeah. So as we move on now to number five, um, if anyone does have any questions or personal experiences, um, no doubt there's a lot of people out there just thinking of their actual lifestyle and what they're yes. doing and how that can be improved. Yes. Please feel free to type it into the chat box because I do have an iPad next to me and we can ask Michelle those questions live. Okay, so moving right. on to the next one. Thoughts and emotions, as I said before, ties in mm. together. And this is another area of health that's really important because the saying goes, your body believes what your mind perceives. Okay. The average Australian woman in particular, over 90% of her daily thoughts are negative in nature. 
we've already screwed ourselves over <laughs> before we get past the thinking yes. phase. So that's the thing. When we have those negative thought patterns, it actually impacts our health because it mm. impacts how we feel and our body can't differentiate that. So if we're telling ourselves that we're not good enough or, you know, we don't deserve that new job promotion or that relationship or whatever it is, the body believes that. Mm. So think of it a little bit like the brain is the parent and your body is a child. Mm. So, you know, when kids were like that young, you could tell them anything they'd believe they in you. Believe <laughs> yeah, it's like that because the body can have a, a ripple effect into your health as well. And so your mental capacity, as generally speaking, they say is your biggest bang for your buck when it comes to your health, getting into Grand Central Station mm. because it has a massive ripple effect on the rest of your body. Yeah. Yeah. Very powerful, isn't it? <laughs> it is. How it just huge. all sort of reacts with yeah. one another. Everything is just so intertwined mm. when it comes to the human body. So what sort of um, advice do you have for people out there, um, you know, especially women? And I think a lot of this comes from society and the whole, you know, people need to have it all. There's, you know, work-life balance for both men and women and that obviously yes. has a huge impact in your overall wellness. What's the number one thing that you go out? Because telling someone to think positive isn't going to always no, work. No, no. It's yeah. like a smile. Get yeah. over it. So how do, you, how do you control that within yourself? I think number one is finding what I call the dream team and these are people that are your support network. Mm. So it might be your partner, family, friends, work colleagues, a coach, yep. a counsellor because if we think of our, our thoughts and our emotions a bit like, you know, a child that's got a heap of toys, when they shove them all in the closet, eventually they're going to spill out and it's like a pressure valve. We mm. need to release that and we need to express that because our emotions... Like I said, our body can't tell the difference between it being like a physical trauma mm. and an emotional trauma, so it is important to address. So I think actually registering that you need to, to share it and there's no right and wrong in it. It is what it is. Mm. I think we're too ready to judge ourselves and we're so critical of ourselves, but we would never speak to our mother, our father, our children, our best friend that way. We'd be there supporting them, giving mm. them advice. So... I think if we think of ourselves like our like best that. friend, then what advice would you give them? Yeah. And that could lead to, well, what do you need to do to help yourself forward from that position? Great. Um, now, we have a quick question from sure. Jennifer just in relation to stress. Yeah. Any tips for time management skills? Yes. I think a lot of people out there, they get into the situation when they can't effectively manage their time and it's something that obviously controls your entire day. It's the one thing you can't control in yes, life. Yes. So how do you manage that to the best of your ability in yeah. order to de-stress and pay attention to these 10 things? Yeah. I'll share a little bit when we get to the um, uh, stress slide yeah. that's additional, but to answer that question... A lot of people go, oh, it's just priorities. Mm. It's what you prioritise. And to a degree, that's true. Yeah. There's lots of things that are, we're responsible for. We're responsible for our families, our children, mm. our work. So I think what we have to do is go through our diaries or our schedules and look at, okay, what are the things that I can't change? So, for example, the times you have to work, the times you have to do things with the kids or mm. the families, block out all of those commitment times. Then look at what do you have left. Mm. And then you can see, right, what do I need to block out for me or for projects or for family and start to prioritise. I think one thing that works really well for women in general that are very busy is to block out whether it's self-time, like an appointment. So if you had to go to the dentist, mm. you'd book that in. Okay. So why not book in that appointment for yourself to sit down for half an hour and yeah. read a book or to do the job that you needed to do? Or So if you look at changing your rhythms it can look at how you structure things okay great um thank you for that question we'll get through to some other ones as we move on tony arena's online hi tony hi to you as well <laughs> um tony's a big time supporter of right back <laughs> awesome. um so this this it looks like somewhere that i would like to be oh, not right yeah. now because yep. i'm here with you we're always <laughs> having a great stop. time <laughs> um, but maybe later on in the day yeah okay Oh, see, once again, another one that we tend to brush to the side and go, oh, yeah, I know I need mm. to get some sleep. But I'm sure you know of people that are up till midnight, 1, to 3 a.m., and then yes. they're up at spoggy farts ready to go again. And 
we just keep pressure on and we just keep going yes. and we forget that sleep is free. And there is nothing on the planet that restores the body like sleep does. Mm. No coffee, no pill, no shake, no potion, nothing replenishes and restores the body like sleep does. Mm. And the thing is, our body actually has a very set criteria for how it organises its own rejuvenation. Mm. It's got set times that it's doing specific organs and specific things. And if you miss that, you can't make up for it. Mm. So for just a basic outline, between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. is our physical repair mm. and between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. is our psychological repair. Okay. So most people are missing that big part, which is the physical mm. repair, and we don't make up for that later. So if we were to nap, I know I'm funny, but if we were to, it's not actually going to replace it because yes. our hormones aren't in the correct state. Okay. They have to be in the right state. And it doesn't matter how many lights and technology we have nowadays, we're still hardwired with the sun and the earth and so mm. are our hormones. Is that where the whole body clock terminology comes yeah. from yep. as well? Because yeah. you, it gets hard. To, I just thought it was like, oh, your body wakes you up at certain times. But no, it's your, body your hormones. Actually, yeah, but you actually have time. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Your body's like, I'm done. Let's go. Come yeah, on, get yeah. up. <laughs> um, well, that's interesting. We have a question from Sanjay. Yeah. So um, Sanjay sleeps eight hours every night but still feels sleepy during the day. Is it sleeping pattern or diet that's an issue there? See, when it comes to individual analysis, you need to look at all areas because it might be, it might actually be a sleep problem if you're not getting into that deep state of sleep, mm. especially if you're, you're stressed. Um, it might be dietary, it might be hydration, it might be a hormonal imbalance. It, there's so many different mm. variables and that's where there's no two people that are the same. Yes. So I always encourage everybody to have an individual analysis because what's right for one person will be completely different for, for somebody else. else. But I'd look at all of those areas and see, well, what sticks out initially mm. to you? You're going, oh, mm, my diet's not so great. So, yeah. And that can have a huge impact on, on sleep too. Definitely. So, yeah. And what about, um, so, John, you know, waking up at 4.30 a.m., how does that affect your psychological repair? Yeah. Our body can actually handle not having enough psychological repair more than it can handle uh, not having enough physical repair. But with saying that, if every night that happens, you know, by the end of the week, you've missed out on hours mm. of repair. So it might be that you need to factor in some other downtime some people find if they go to bed wound up, so yes. they've done heaps of work and then quick get to bed, you know, their brain hasn't had an opportunity to wind down, their body hasn't had an opportunity to wind down. And we tend to have lots of technology in our bedrooms. Yes. iPods, iPads, iPhones. I've heard that's, been, that's quite bad It's now. huge. The electromagnetic pulse from that prevents our body from going into a deep sleep and it can wake people up. Wow. So I'd look at what's in your bedroom because you might find if you get some technology out of your bedroom that might rectify that problem mm. like that great yeah okay let's move on now um this looks nice it does relationships and this is another area of health which is generally overlooked because we kind of just take it for granted it's yes. just something we have but we forget that human beings, we're social creatures and we actually need interaction. I mean, that's why solitary confinement is one of the worst punishments we can have for criminals mm. because we need interaction in order to be healthy. Yes. So there's the obvious relationships you want to look at, your partner, your children, family, friends, mm. work colleagues, they all impact us and it can be in positive ways or, or negative ways but we tend to overlook how the relationships in our life are impacting us. And it is said that the top five people that we interact with, we become. I have heard that before. Yeah, mm. it's pretty powerful. So it's something to think about. Who are you interacting with and are they building you up? Are they yes. supportive? Are they looking after you and vice versa or... You know, are they tearing you down and belittling you? Or, you know, what are you surrounding yourself with? Mm. Uh, it's really, it's an important one to look at all of those relationships in yeah. your life. And what about for people who, because I know these days there's a lot of emphasis on people working from home, um, you know, yeah. different offices, yep. different types of working environments. What sort of impact can that have on our day-to-day -day lives and our relationships? Yes. And how do we sort of find ways to make sure we are surrounded by not necessarily, you know, 40 or 50 people a day, <laughs> 
but still making up for that in different yes. areas of our life. It is very true because I find, and I've been there myself when I've done a lot of work from home, that you can feel very isolated yes. and it can have a psychological component mm. to it, which can become a stressor. So it is important to make sure that you do get out of the house and, and interact. And sometimes some people find it's as simple as just going to the supermarket mm. and, you know, interacting with some other people. Because and then you're at the cash register talking to a lady. <laughs> <laughs> but we do. We need human interaction. Yes. We need we need touch. I mean, there's a reason why we hold hands with our partners and we cuddle our children mm. because we need that intimacy. We've got those fibres in our skin that that crave that human yeah. interaction. So it can be very detrimental for us if we don't factor in, you know, catch ups with our friends and families and partners as important because it it does have physical and psychological downfall if we don't look after them. Okay, great. Um, so any questions on relationships, feel free to ask us. We'll get to those shortly. Now we're moving on. Um, I think a lot of us can relate to this image Have here. we felt like this before? Mm, let's ponder that. I think we've all felt like that at some point. The funny thing is most people only relate stress to that slide, yes. that feeling of being wound up. Ah! You know, life's gone to shit. Yeah, or the moment is, oh, my God. Mm. You know, that actual stressed feeling but that's only one of many ways we can experience stress oh god there's more <laughs> there's more well even just all the 10 steps that i'm going mm. through here all of these can actually create stresses in your system if they're not addressed okay. because your body can't tell the difference between stress. So whether you're running down the street because a zombie's chasing you mm. or you're stressed because of a work deadline your body actually perceives it exactly the same. It cannot tell the difference with what stress is. It's just stress to the system. Wow, that's quite scary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So stress can impact us through all of these topics and more that we've been talking mm -hmm. about. It can be, you know, stimulant stress, digestive stress, fungal stress, sleep stress. There's all different ways that stress can impact us. So having a bit of a checklist and going, okay, here's some areas of stress. Where can I alleviate stress mm. from, from my life? So, for example, with the questions about is nutrition impacting my, my sleep, potentially it could be because the stress of nutrition has a massive ripple effect like mm. all areas of stress can. And the consequences of stress and not yes. being able to deal with it effectively, yes. um, what, what are they? Well, in Australia, stress is the number one reason people see their doctor. Mm. So stress and fatigue, so being overwhelmed, feeling overworked, just that stressed out feeling, it has a massive impact because then it, it degrades the body. Okay. Because think of it like if we look at like that primal instinct within mm. us, stress was there for a survival mechanism. So if we were running from a saber-toothed tiger mm. or something, but nowadays we're constantly running from a saber-toothed tiger with our deadlines and pick up the kids and get to soccer practice mm. and I've got another work deadline and there's so much stuff on the go that we're always in that state. So it wears the body down, so ageing processes happen and stress is the number one cause of any illness, disease and ailment that the body can have. Wow. Yeah. Very fascinating. Yeah. Um, now, moving on, um, we've dealt with the stress. Now, this is something that probably causes more stress yes. than any one of the other steps. <laughs> yes. Work and finance. Elaborate. Yes. It's a, it's a big one. In fact, nowadays, money represents our primal instinct. So, our primal instinct is for food, shelter and water. But because money provides us with the capacity to mm. have those things. Nowadays, money in our finances is all related to that primal instinct. And I see with all of my clients and the people I coach, there's two ends of the spectrum. Like there's people that might be struggling with their finances and the issues that come mm. from that. But there's also the other end of the spectrum with people that seemingly have enough money, but there's all of the issues that come from that as Trauma. well. So it has to be looked at in all those sorts mm. of ways because money is a big deal nowadays. Yeah. It really is. And our work, not only is it something that provides us with income, but it's something that we do every week. Mm. And so many people hate their job and they don't love what they do and it, it causes more stress. Yeah. So, you know, looking at your work, do you love your job or is your job doing you? Like there's so many things to look at when it comes to your work and your finances mm. because it, it 
once again, plays a huge role in your actual overarching health. Yeah, and I think, you know, you spend so much time at work, more time, you know, and yeah. going back to those relationships and what you were saying about, you know, these people who you spend time at work with, you spend more time with them than you what you do with your friends exactly. or your family. And if what you're saying about those five people we surround ourselves with and you don't like those people, then ultimately that's going to just all blow up one day, isn't it? That's right. And yeah. it's just like that ripple effect. It just expands out. Yeah, exactly. So moving on from money... Mm -hmm. um, this is interesting. I think this is one that's quite underrated yeah. by yes. a lot of people. Uh, and this is actually my favourite one. It's, it's what I call being true to yourself. And this has so many meanings to it because nowadays we feel like we have to fit into a mould or wear masks or the facades mm. to, to get through. And we don't really know who we are, who yes. our authentic self is. And if we do know, we stifle it and we put everybody else first. Mm. So, for example, something I get all of the people that I coach to do is what I call core values. It's knowing who you are on a really deep, intimate mm -hmm. level. And some, some questions that um, I ask, you know, might seem quite straightforward, but people are like, I should know this. Why don't I know yeah. this? So it's, it's one of those things where it, it's learning how to get intimate with yourself and really know the person within because at the end of the day, that's the biggest relationship you can ever have. Mm. You know, this is a relationship we have 365 days a year that we can't even escape. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we want to make that a positive relationship and we want to get to know what do we truly stand mm. for? What do we really want in life so that we can make sure we tick off our bucket list? Because the last thing we want is to get to the end of our life and be going, I wish I did this. I wish I'd done that. I don't really know who I am, you know, so knowing who you are and, and being true to that person within, mm. that that's very uplifting and very enlightening. Yeah, definitely. And I'm interested on your thoughts with this because I hear it more and more and I see it more and more. What role is social media playing on this? Yeah. Because I feel like people are slowly, and I think there's so many benefits that come along with social media, yes. but I start, even with my nieces and my nephews who are so involved in this now, I can see it becoming quite negative when yep. it comes to your true self. Yes. So... Like you said, there's the positive side of it. You know, we get to interact with, like, mm. everybody on here today. Um, but then there's the negatives of it where people are hiding behind, you know, their phone screens or, or computer screens mm. and they, they feel that it's okay to say whatever they say and, and put other people down. Yes. I think, number one, it, it's teaching people, especially children, you know, that top five thing again, yes. who do you want to surround yourself mm. with? Because... Obviously, nobody wants fair weather friends. We, yeah. want, we want that realness. We want that true, genuine connection with mm. people. And so I think it's learning to disconnect, in all honesty. You know, put everything down. Have no technology Tuesday. Yes. You know, have those things where it's important to, to shut off. Mm. So I think it's important to make sure people learn that, yeah, all that stuff's there and it has its place, but don't allow it to take over, you know, have mm. have shut-off time. Yeah. Have shut-off time. And guidelines as yeah, well as exactly. to when it's right. And for each family it's going to be completely different. Mm. So it's figuring out what's going to work for you. Yeah, great. Now, um, we've gone through those steps. Yes. That's ten, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> account. Um, we're going to just um, wrap up now just with, um, you know, how we can self-assess and go through that. Please ask any questions that you like and we'll get to those um, in the next few minutes. But also feel free to complete the feedback survey, which is on the tab next to the PowerPoints. Um, it's great for us to get this feedback and it also allows you to um, opt in to receive some more information and insights and educational material from Michelle as well. So um, we've gone through the tech checklist. Now, that's all well and good. We've got yep. these ideas here and they're really high level but how do we put them into every single day yeah. and how do we self-assess and how do we make sure that we're doing it all right? Yes um, and essentially that's what I put in my book The Mastery of Wellness mm. is you can go through all of those steps and it actually plans out how you can self-assess but I think you can just do it in a simple way like you can jot down those 10 areas and be really honest with yourself mm. and go I'm actually going to bed at like 
12 o'clock every yeah. night. Pretty sure that needs a bit of assessment there. Yeah. Something I can work on. You know, be honest with yourself. That's the first step because mm. a lot of goes, oh, I've got nutrition down pat, I've got this down pat. But you know, and you're we, only lying to yourself. Exactly, aren't you? exactly. So we do need to be honest with ourselves and go, okay, where do we truly need to to start with mm. it? And I think that's our start point. So some people will have plenty of those steps sorted, and there'll be a few that jump out to them, and that should be their start point. Mm. Yeah. And I think it's important, like you said, to take that time out and to block that time in your diary to self assess. Yes. And you know, this isn't something that. You think of it like another appointment in your life, something that's that important. Because exactly. What are besides you know we spoke about health, but what are the repercussions if we don't look after our overall wellness and take into account every single thing that we've just spoken about? See, that's the thing because we just go, oh yeah, health. I'll get to it because you know work has demands, mm. family has demand. You know life is demanding nowadays. But the thing is, if we don't have our health, then we have nothing. Mm. We don't have the mental and physical capacity to do our job to the level that we want and need. We don't have the capacity to be present with the people that we love and we hold dear because we're we're too exhausted or we have no energy or we're just not really there. And mm. we've all experienced that where we're in a room but like we're we're checked out. And we don't want to live life like that. And most people think that it's normal to live with aches and pains and ailments and discomforts and all sorts of things, and, and it's not. It's mm. not how the human body was designed. So I think it, it's all about making sure that we, we go back to mm. connecting with ourself. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And just on that, we've got a comment here from Sanjay. So yep. a person plays different roles in his or her life. By going through these steps, 10 steps, um, they can help you. But how do you deal with your external environment that makes you stress? Uh, so if you do have those people or those things in your life, how do you deal with that in a manner that's probably not going to cause you more stress? Yes. And that can be tricky depending on what the actual situation is. Like, is it a home environment? or a work environment because how you might handle those might be a bit different. Um, I think honesty is the best policy mm. in, in all honesty. Mm. <laughs> uh, you know, if there's something going on with someone, then confronting that and going, okay, what can we do to make it mm. better? And not in a, in a demeaning way but acknowledging something's not right and that it needs to be addressed. Yes. So... I think first and foremost, we tend to look at the stuff that we can't control. Mm. But why don't we start with the things that we can control? We can control our own actions. We can control what we do. So a lot of people get stressed like, oh, my God, it's raining today <laughs> or, you know, I'm stuck in traffic and I'm never going to make it. Like there's lots of things that are out of our control. Put them to the side. Mm. Let's focus on what can we actually control mm. and start from there. Yep. Because sometimes it might be our external environment that's stressing us. But if we check in with those 10 things and alleviate a lot of those stresses, maybe we have enough capacity to handle mm. those external stresses better. Yeah, definitely. And I think, like you said, you so easy to stress about those things that are outside of your control but if you do take a step back and realize yeah. that well you can't change it so there's no point stressing. that's right <laughs> how often should you check in with these 10 things then look I think it's once again very individual some people find they need to check in weekly to get the ball rolling mm. and to be really honest with themselves and get started on on getting healthy yes. um, and then from there it might be monthly six monthly I wouldn't go any less than six monthly and um, you know even for myself I sit down with myself and go all right Michelle let's get real what do we need to work on because we're all human we all have yes. areas that we want and need to improve on to get to that next level of health and mm -hmm. well-being because it has that ripple effect through all of our life. And I kind of think of it like walking up a flight of stairs, like mm. each level has another step of health towards it and it gets us bigger and greater towards mm. ultimately how we want to be and live our lives. Um, so we've had a few questions um, regarding the actual event today. So the event will be recorded and you will receive a copy of the recording within 48 hours into your inbox. Do you have any handouts or anything like that that we can put along to a company to give people some more thoughts and inspiration about doing this and having their own checklist? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and something that I do for a lot of uh, businesses as well is I offer them a complimentary strategy session. Mm. So we can sit down and talk about what are the areas that you might need to 
work on in the business for everybody there because the health of the mm. workers impacts the business. And then the same for individuals. I offer that on a one-on-one on -on -one basis as well. So if someone really wants to, to take that in there, they can mm. contact and organise that strategy session. Right, and those details are in the feedback survey as well. Um, but any other questions, feel free to email us once the event is over and we can get straight to Michelle. Um, but I think it's a great idea even for bosses of small business or executives of large corporations exactly. to think about the overall wellness well, of their it. entire workforce and start to invest in this sort of thing as well because like you said it does impact every single aspect of the business and you know you could have the most the highest performing employee but they could be going home crying at night every night because they don't have that overall wellness exactly and they might be performing really well but imagine how much better they could be mm. performing if everything was in play and and I also think it's really important for companies and businesses to look after everybody mm. nowadays because there's so much pressure on all of us, but I think if we all just band together and support one yes. another, then we can have the levels of health and happiness that we want, both in our professional mm. lives and our personal lives. Okay, um, one more um, question yep. that I'm going to ask that's just come through. Um, so colleagues keep saying that I am stressed, but um, how could I tell them that they're making me stressed? You know, my job has so many de deadlines and I count on them to give me their reports on time. They love to do this huddle-cuddle thing that, you know, could turn into bitching <laughs> sessions yeah. that could easily go from 10 minutes to 20 minutes. Um, and when I said I had to go, as I had no luxury to stand there and listening to that bitching, they would give me a cuddle and pray and meditate for my well-being, which is driving me crazy. So it seems <laughs> like one of those situations that I feel stressed just thinking about that. Yeah, so. exactly. Have you tried honesty is the best policy yeah. with that? Because, I mean, it sounds like they have well intentions and they may do and they may not do with their huddle cuddle aspect because that goes two ways sometimes mm. with women. But um, I think maybe you need to share with them that, you know what, you guys can play a part at helping me to mm. de-stress. So maybe put the responsibility back on them a little bit and say, you know what, if you really want to help me, here's ways that you can. Yes. <laughs> put it back on them. Get them to help you out more and, and you know, give that a shot. I, I'd mm. start there because it can be a bit challenging with all of those interrelationships at work, but, um, yeah, I, I'd go with that to start off with and see yeah. how that goes. <laughs> Let us know how it goes. Yeah. Um, so thank you, everyone, for joining. We've come to the end of the 45 minutes, but I've learned so much. I'm going to drink a litre of water. I'm going to make <laughs> sure I get to bed on time, and I'm going to try and check in with my checklist to make sure that I also can have overall wellness. Final thoughts from you, Michelle? Well, I, um, I have that little slide up that you can probably all see, and I think this quote is something that we can all contemplate, essentially. Mm. So I'll just read it out for all of you. What is your health worth? Could you earn a living without your health? Could you play and enjoy your life without health? Could you go anywhere in the world and buy health? And what price would you put on your health if you could sell it? Hmm. The next time you think you're too busy or you feel too financially short, ask yourself this question in all seriousness. What is my health worth to me? And... On that note, we'll leave it there. Thank you, everyone, for joining yet again. A very, very interesting way to spend 45 minutes and something we can all learn at least, I think, three or four things from and take away into our everyday life. The event will be recorded, so keep a lookout in your inbox. Um, and also, if you have any questions or would like to hear more from Michelle, please feel free to contact us directly. Otherwise, thanks again for joining, and we'll see you at the next Business Skills event. Bye for now.